Welcome back to Spectre AI. This is Spectre P. Today, our video discusses BB84 error rates and QBER thresholds. Up to this point, we've talked about how the protocol works, how errors get corrected, and how privacy amplification cleans up whatever information Eve might have captured. But here's the key question. How many errors can BB84 actually tolerate before the entire protocol becomes insecure? At what point does the system say, stop, something's wrong? That boundary is defined by the QBER, the quantum bit error rate. It's one of the most important metrics in all of quantum cryptography. And today, we're going to break it down, visually and intuitively. We'll look at where errors come from, how QBER is calculated, what thresholds matter, and what it means when Eve starts pushing that number higher. So let's get into it. This is BB84 error rates and QBER thresholds, explained. Before we ever measure QBER, it's important to understand where these errors actually come from. In BB84, errors are completely normal, even when no one is attacking the system. Quantum channels introduce noise that randomly flips some of the bits Alice sends. Photons scatter, fibers bend, and the environment itself creates disturbances. On top of that, detectors aren't perfect. They produce dark counts, they misfire, and their timing isn't always precise. These imperfections can create mismatched bits even when the channel is clean. And if Eve is present, her interaction almost always adds additional disturbances. Whether she's intercepting photons, sending probing pulses, or manipulating the channel, all of these effects combine to form one number, the quantum bit error rate, or QBER. It's the key metric that tells Alice and Bob how healthy their quantum link really is. So what exactly is the QBER, the quantum bit error rate? At its core, QBER simply measures how often Alice and Bob disagree. If they share a sequence of bits and a few of those positions don't match, those disagreements tell us how much noise, or how much interference, is present in the system. QBER captures everything, random flips from the quantum channel, detector imperfections, and any disturbance caused by Eve. A low QBER means the link is healthy and likely secure, but a high QBER is a warning sign. It may indicate too much noise, system problems, or even an active attack. In the example shown here, Alice and Bob differ in two positions out of the total block. That fraction, mismatches divided by total bits, is the QBER. And this single number becomes the diagnostic tool that decides whether BB84 can continue or whether Alice and Bob must abort the protocol altogether. Now that we know what QBER is, the next question is what actually causes it to rise? At the lowest level, QBER is shaped by the physical limits of the quantum channel itself. Longer fiber links, atmospheric scattering, and environmental noise all increase the chances that a photon arrives distorted or not at all. Above that, the performance of the detectors plays a major role. Dark counts, timing jitter, and efficiency mismatch can all create false or missing detections, which show up as mismatched bits between Alice and Bob. And finally, if Eve is present, her interference almost always drives QBER even higher. Whether she's using intercept resend, sending Trojan pulses, or manipulating the timing, her interaction disturbs the quantum states and pushes the error rate upward. All of these factors together determine whether BB84 is operating in a safe region or whether the protocol is entering a danger zone where a secure key may no longer be possible. Now that we understand what QBER is and what affects it, let's talk about what the numbers actually look like in a real BB84 system. In practice, a QBER between 0 and 5% is considered completely normal. 
This range mostly reflects ordinary channel noise and detector imperfections. Nothing to worry about. Between 5 and 8%, we enter a caution zone. Here, the error rate may be rising due to increased noise or slight misalignment in the system. Once QBER climbs above 8%, things become more concerning. At this point, Alice and Bob need to consider the possibility of interference, including the presence of Eve. As the error rate approaches 10 to 11%, the protocol reaches its security boundary. Beyond this region, BB84 can no longer guarantee secrecy. The only safe option is to abort the key generation process. These ranges give Alice and Bob a practical sense of what's healthy, what's suspicious, and what's outright unsafe. So now let's answer the real question. Why does BB84 actually fail when the QBER gets too high? The key idea is that BB84 relies on two post-processing steps, error correction and privacy amplification, and both of them involve a trade-off with information leakage. Error correction tries to fix mismatched bits, but it does so over a public classical channel. That means Alice and Bob inevitably leak a small amount of information during the process. Privacy amplification can remove Eve's knowledge, but only when her information is small enough. This works as long as the QBER is low, because Alice and Bob still share more mutual information about the key than Eve does. But when the QBER rises above roughly 11%, that balance flips. Eve's information becomes comparable to, or even greater than, Alice and Bob's. In this regime, Error correction leaks too much, and privacy amplification can no longer eliminate Eve's advantage. So above this threshold, no secret key can be distilled. BB84 has no choice but to abort, because the protocol can no longer guarantee security. To understand why BB84 fails above the 11% mark, we need to look at the secret key rate, the quantity that tells Alice and Bob how many secure bits they can actually extract from their raw data. In information theoretic security, the key rate depends on two things, how much Alice and Bob agree with each other and how much Eve could possibly know. When the QBER is low, Alice and Bob share far more mutual information than Eve does. In this region, the secret key rate is positive, meaning they can successfully apply error correction and privacy amplification to distill a secure key. As the QBER rises, the disagreement between Alice and Bob increases, and Eve's potential information increases as well. Eventually, the balance flips. At around 11%, the key rate reaches zero. This is the critical point where Alice and Bob lose their information advantage. The graph on the right shows this transition. As QBER increases, the secret key rate slopes downward and eventually crosses zero near 11%. Beyond this point, the key rate becomes negative, meaning no amount of processing can remove Eve's knowledge. A secure key simply isn't possible, and that is why BB84 must abort whenever the QBER exceeds roughly 11%. So let's summarize the big picture. QBER is the key diagnostic number in BB84. It tells Alice and Bob how often they disagree and how healthy their quantum link really is. A low QBER means the channel is stable and a secure key is possible. As the error rate rises, it signals noise misalignment, or even interference from Eve. Around 11%, the secret key rate drops to zero. Above that point, no amount of post-processing can restore secrecy, and BB84 has to abort. Understanding QBER, what it means and how it behaves, is essential to understanding when BB84 works and when it doesn't. Thanks for watching. I hope this video gave you a deeper understanding of how QBER shapes the security of BB84. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Visit specterai.ai for 55 hands-on quantum security labs, where you can learn by doing. You can also check out our books on Amazon if you want to go even further. Leave a comment and tell us what you want to learn next. We read everything. And as always, thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next video.